Bienvenue, my fantastic freelancer friends. My name is William, the host of your anthem, and I am finally back in my lovely soundproof studio after spending about three weeks with my fiance and her family out of state. While I was gone, I did some research on anthem during its post-production phase, during a phase of the project when it was known as Project Dylan. Now, if you all don't know, Bioware has a tendency to name its internal projects after musicians and rock stars, hence the name Project Dylan. Anthem would eventually be called Anthem after E3 2017, after some marketing, but it was initially supposed to be called Beyond. Anyways, all the pictures and all the footage you're going to see today are from roughly the time frame of 2013 to 2017, back when it was called Project Dylan. Now, a lot of this stuff has never been seen before, and I even have never seen it until albeit recently. So what I'm going to do is quickly breeze through the images that I stumbled upon and link the artists down in the description below from their art stations, because these guys definitely deserve a crap ton of credit. But a bulk of this video will be dedicated to showing off all this stuff from Project Dylan, and later towards the end of the video I'm going to show some never before seen footage that was only used in internals to show off the, back then what the Ranger Javelin was called, the Medium Javelin, or the Medium Exo. But without further ado, Let's get into it. The first few images come from Don Arcita, who was Anthem's lead environment artist back when Anthem was in, well, Project Dylan State. This first image is of a very refined Ranger Javelin concept in what I can only assume to be the Heart of Rage, or at least an environment that was very Heart of Rage-esque. In the next image, we see another Ranger Javelin concept, and as you can see, the backpack is somewhat different than what we're usually used to with the Ranger Javelin. If you all own the Art of Anthem, then you know that these Javelins went through a number of iterations, and we're probably looking at one of them right now. Though this image is probably more or less trying to show off the textures of the world and the environment. Here you will see a pretty famous image from Project Dylan that was taken and used, I want to say at E3 2014 or something like that. Anyways, some of you know that Anthem was going to be a survival game where you would basically take scrap pieces from ships to build your javelins. Of course, that concept was later scrapped, but it's cool to revisit. Again, we have some texturing of a mountainside, but here we have the original Fort Tarsus, once again done by Don Arcita. As you can see, Fort Tarsus looks vaguely similar to what we see today, minus the giant javelin launch bay in the center and all the tents in the marketplace kind of squeezing us in. Here's another more raw version of it with less population, and I want to say this is rendered in engine, but I'm not 100% sure. Here we have the original bar that was going to be in Fort Tarsus, later it was reworked. I'm not 100% sure why, but I can take it or leave it either way. You never spend too much time in the bar as is. Once again we have some texturing and this looks like magma or frozen magma from the Heart of Rage. This next image might be familiar to a lot of you, as it features a helmet that everyone has been dying to have since day one of the game. This is the version one of the Ranger, and more or less the body's the same, the only different thing is the helmet, but this shot was taken in-engine between 2013 and 2017 again, and it's probably a lot closer to what we saw at E3 2017 than what we have right now. Once again, another shot of the magma. And here's a different angle of the bar. In the back you can probably make out three terracotta statues. They look very Wise Men-esque. And you can actually see them in that live action short that EA published shortly before the game released. Once again we have another shot of the forest in Anthem, and it does look like all of this was shot in Engine. This next picture is definitely an earlier version of Anthem, where it was more wide open fields with crashed spaceships, mountains in the background, so on and so forth. This looks a lot more of what we would have seen if Anthem had gone the more survival route. Again, another image of what appears to be the Heart of Rage. Another scar structure, which we are all way too familiar with. Here's another shot of the ruins, and it appears there is some sort of Arcanist laboratory somewhere underneath that Shaper Relic in the background. Another shot from it above where you can definitely see some sort of civilization has built itself inside of the Shaper Relic. What's cool is you can see Javelin launch bays on the side there, those four little pods. That's originally how the Javelins were supposed to depart, as you could see at E3 2017. This is evidently where you would dock your Javelin and get in and get out of it. And this is once again probably where they were going with the more survival route. Now I want to say this is the inner workings of Fort Tarsus, kind of like the steamworks area underneath that keeps it powered, heated, 
and so on and so forth. You can even see bunk beds and what looks like engineers in the background. And once again, another shot of what appears to be the steam works of Fort Tarsus. What's interesting is this all looks to be pre-rendered in engine. So somewhere out there, these assets exist. These next images come from Marat Zakirov, and I am so sorry if I butchered their name. But these are early concept paintings of what Anthem would have been if it was a survival game. As you can see, there are very early concepts of what they called the Medium Exos. And you can see they're using their jump jets to ascend over obstacles. Originally, Anthem wasn't going to feature flying, but instead it was going to have grappling hooks and short jump jets. Anyways, now we're getting into the really, really juicy stuff before the video. What you're seeing here for the first time ever is prototyping of the Javelin exosuits. All of these images and the video that follows after is courtesy of Nathaniel Lamartina, who is currently an assistant art director at Ubisoft Quebec. But before that, he was the prototyping lead on the team that would eventually develop the exos, or the Javelins. These suits were also brought to life by Alex Fingini, who would do the concept in 3D, while Nathaniel would figure out the engineering. As most of you know, the Ranger Javelin was the first Javelin ever developed, and there were only going to be three originally. The Light Javelin, the Medium Javelin, and the Heavy Javelin. Now, I don't know where in the design process they decided to make four Javelins, and I'm not complaining, I love all the archetypes, but what you're looking at on screen is the Anthem Suit version 2, aka the Proto Javelin. All of this would later go on to become the building blocks of the Ranger, and pretty much all Javelins. Now, I don't know about you all, but I would love to see an Anthem 2.0, this Ranger Javelin, come back to life. I know they've got the 3D model assets for it, including the bit pack. So I don't know, it would be neat to have this as kind of a, hey, you guys stuck around with Anthem. In Anthem 2.0, here's what we made in Dylan. Just as a little something. I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit too ambitious. But next you can see the Javelin model sheet all pulled apart and see all the various cloth physics and what's actually underneath and all the pistons and yada yada. We're coming up on the final two images before the video and I'll go through these just really quickly. But once again, here is the Ranger Javelin more or less completed or at least the prototype Ranger Javelin painted in lime green and black. And originally the legs were supposed to open up a lot more and the back folds and the arms and everything else. But it looks like they decided to go with a more simplistic open back, you hop into the back. Anyways, I'm going to narrate over this video and then later on at the end of the video after the credits roll, if you all want, I'll have the video once again, just no audio, no dialogue over it, and you guys can listen to the original thing. So as I mentioned before, this video has never been really seen before as it was used in internals and it was only recently published by Nathaniel. This was to show off all the physics, the textures, and everything else with the javelin, and more or less its overall silhouette. All this was rendered in frostbite as far as I'm aware. As you can see, it was called the Exo Medium at one point in time, indicating that there was going to be the light, the medium, and the heavy. The customized interior is very, very neat, and while I would have liked to have seen this fully opened up concept, eh, I'm okay with what we got. And as you all can see, this is 100% procedural material generation. It's amazing to see what Frostbite could do even way back then before we have it now, but this was the real kicker. More customization than ever. Showing off that you could customize and change the paint job of your javelins and allow for greater customization. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think that is pretty damn awesome. And once again, a huge thank you to Nathaniel La Martina and all the other artists and graphic designers and 3D modelers and character artists and what have you who worked on Anthem during the Project Dylan phase. They essentially developed the spirit of Anthem. And it's very cool getting to look back at all of this stuff and see where Anthem was going and what it's become now. But what did you all think of these photos and the video? Do you think Anthem would have done better as a survival game or do you like it just the way it is now? Did any one image catch your fancy? Let me know in the comment section below, as I really do read through all of your comments, and I will reply if there is conversation potential. And if you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date on all things about Anthem, including 2.0 as we get developments, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe, as it really does help me out, and allows me to reach more freelancers. 
just like you. I hope all of you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day as always, and I'm looking forward to seeing each and every last one of you in the next video very soon. And remember, freelancers, we are strong alone, but we are so much stronger together.